my friend, did you know something ha is happening right now in this country? I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost that God is causing Christians to wake up. It's time for us to wake up. Many of you have been in a deep slumber, a deep sleep. And when we go to the Bible and we begin to discover what happens when we sleep, it's a dangerous thing. God is calling us to wake up now. Wake up, Christian. Wake up, churchgoer, and let's follow Jesus Christ. We have just celebrated the resurrection, what it's about. Y'all let everything dead wake up in this nation and let the living Savior come back in the hearts of men. If you think that you're a Christian, I want you to wake up. Wake up to the fact that we've got to preach the gospel. We've got to live the gospel. We've got to love Jesus. We've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's time that the church rise up and wake up. Listen, I'm going to read a text about what happens when we sleep in this country? This is a Monday Minute, and we're uh, we're going to go to some clips this time um, from Springfield, Illinois. That was Abraham Lincoln's hometown. It's also the capital of Illinois. There's a lot of corruption in Illinois, but I went there and prayed. But first, let's go to this scripture text. Matthew 13, 24 through 28. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field, but while men slept... His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit that appeared, the tares also. So the servants of the householder come and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. Do you understand that while you stay asleep and why you keep sleeping and why you keep yielding to the flesh, why you keep sinning, why you keep preferring all of that over going to church and God? The enemy is tearing up our nation. He's tearing it up right now, not because of who's in the White House, but because of what goes on in your house. If you do not get up and come back to church, let the Spirit of God arise in your hearts and let a change happen. We are all in big trouble. God starts on the inside of people. He starts on the inside of us. Will you let God arise? Will you let Jesus rise in your heart? Well, listen to me. I think it's time that the church wake up and we let Jesus rise up in our hearts. Let him rise up in our hearts. Well, I'm going to watch these few clips and we're going to be back in just a few moments. Here I am standing outside the original Capitol Hill here in Springfield, Illinois. This is the capital, the old capital for the state of Illinois. And around here, everybody is always talking about Lincoln. But what they fail to realize is that he was a Republican and he had morality in his heart. He had his morality in his heart. And so the great thing is this. They want to quote the house divided cannot stand speech, but we all know that that came from the Bible. That's a quote from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. If uh, He was basically quoting about demonic things. And so we need to return in this country back to the principles of the Bible. They also say that there's no documented proof that this was the Ten Commandments or that. The documented proof is in the buildings. Look at this. Look at the courts. Look at the various entities in place. They have the Ten Commandments there. There stands Moses. What more documented proof do you need than that? This is crazy. They're in a state of denial. We've got to wake up this country. We've got to understand Lincoln would flip over in his grave if he knew what they're trying to make him support. God is not happy. We've got to begin to turn back to principles of the Bible and love Jesus with all of our hearts. Here I am standing right down on the street of the Lincoln's home, right behind me, right here. This is the Lincoln's home. I'm talking about their original home. It even has furniture in it, horsehair furniture that, uh, that they had from the day. You know, everybody wants to venerate Lincoln for his speeches. He was a powerful speech maker, and he was caught. A lot of people don't know this, but he was caught when he became president. Uh, four months before he even got there, seven states seceded from the Union. He was caught in his efforts to bring this nation back together. But long before that, he fought against slavery because he knew it was a moral evil. Listen to me today. Out of all of the speeches that he gave that are venerated, one of my problems with the state that we're in is that whenever they do clips in movies or, or talk or give tours, they always skip over the parts of the speeches that contain God. <laughs> in, in one of his speeches, he talked about his farewell speech to his community. He talked about that the God of George Washington would keep them safe and that he would pray that everybody in this town would be kept safe. Why is it we keep skipping over God? You tell me, politician. You tell me, uh, state representatives. You say you have no documented evidence, but the documentation is in the very speech that you read. And we're in a day when we want to skip over those parts because it was God who brought morality. It is God who sets morals and the God of love 
Abraham Lincoln said that he knew that, that God would be everywhere, that God would keep him and keep the people of this town, just like God kept George Washington. What God? The Christian God, the one that wants morality, that put that in their hearts. The abolitionists wanted morality to set men free, and God wants to set you free of sin, the sin nature. But to acknowledge God is to acknowledge our deficient state and the things that we do. Wake up and let's not change history's words. Hallelujah. Well, God's good. Listen, I want you to wake up. I got to read 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 through 9. It says this, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunk are drunk in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but obtained salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know that the deepest place, then this is what sleeping represents to those slumbering, okay? Uh, you are yielded totally to the flesh when you sleep. When you sleep, you're yielded to the will of the flesh when you sleep. This is where the church is. We are yielding totally to the flesh. Instead of being awakened in our spirit to follow God, we are yielding to the flesh. And that sin nature is ruling over us. You are giving the flesh what it wants. You're staying out of church. You're not following God's plan. You say, well, I'm going to go to the casino. No, wake up. Wake up. God is speaking now. The Holy Ghost is trying to wake up the church. Are you a part of the church? Then wake up now. Be filled with the Spirit and rise to the occasion. Rise and speak, O oh man and woman of God. Rise now. It's time now in this nation. God wants to move. I'll see you next time. Go to ferventfire.com. Sing your support. Watch the final word. I love you. See you next time.